Hello and welcome to this example where we look at the frictional forces on a box that's uh, on a ramp. And the goal of this is to give you a simple example of uh, how frictional forces work and how to compute them. And it turns out this also gives us an interesting way to determine the coefficient of friction between two surfaces. So the problem we have here is we have a box and it's on a ramp and the ramp has an angle of theta which for the example uh, we'll assume that theta is equal to 30 degrees. We'll assume that the box weighs 50 pounds. And our goal is to find the values of the coefficient of friction for which the box will not move. Okay, so we want to find values of mu that will keep this box from sliding down the ramp. So the thing to do, or the first thing we'll do, is create a free body diagram of the box. And this will then help us find uh, the value of mu for which the box, or for which the block is in static equilibrium. And the idea is that any smaller value of mu will make the, the block start to slide. So let's, uh, here's the block itself all alone. So we've got a weight that is straight down of 50 pounds. We'll have a normal force between or exerted on the block by the ramp. We'll call this N, and this is perpendicular to the uh, bottom surface of the block. And then we'll have a frictional force, which I'll call uh, F sub F. And the maximum value that this force can have is equal to mu times n. Okay. So the way to um, uh, the way to solve this, or at least one way to solve this, uh, is to define a set of axes. So let's define a y axis or an x axis and a y axis like this. And the reason to do this is it makes things a little easier. You can, uh, when we're done, you'll be able to sum in an x direction and sum in a y direction. Then we need to get the x and y components of the weight. And uh, if this angle down here is 30 degrees, then this angle here will also be 30 degrees, which means that the weight, well, let's see, let's do this in, in red. Um, I'll call this the W sub N. This is the weight vector, or the part of the weight vector that's normal to the uh, uh, surface. And then we'll also have a W sub P, which is the weight vector that's perpendicular to the normal, I guess, or parallel to the surface. And so if you draw this a little better than I have over there, you've got 50 pounds and then at an angle of 30 degrees, you've got WN and WP. Okay, and so uh, WN is going to be uh, 50 pounds times cosine of 30 degrees, which is 43.3 pounds. And WP is going to be 50 pounds sine of 30 degrees, which is 25 pounds. Okay, so now if we apply the sum of forces in the X, well, let's actually do Y direction first. The sum of forces in the Y direction is equal to zero. This says that um, n minus wn is equal to zero. We know what wn is. We just figured it out here. So this tells us that n is 43.3 pounds. Okay. And um, if we now look at the sum of the forces in the x direction, we have that um, for things to be in static equilibrium, we have WP minus 
f sub f is equal to 0, which says that um, the max, well, uh, wp minus f sub f is equal to 0. The maximum f sub f that we can have, so the max f sub f is mu times n. And in order for this to be in static equilibrium, we would need this maximum value of f sub f to be equal to wp. That is, any wp greater than this max of f, or max f sub f, uh, means that the block is going to start sliding. So if we basically then uh, set wp equal to mu sub n, or mu times n, we know what n is. We know what WP is, so we can write this as um, WP, which is 25 pounds, is equal to mu times N, which is 43.3 pounds. And when we solve this for mu, we would get then mu is equal to 0.578. Okay, so what this says, to make sure it's clear what we've done here, if mu, if the, co if the actual coefficient of friction is greater than this value, then the block will not slide. Okay, so if mu is 0.7, then the maximum value of F sub F would be 0.7 times 43.3, which is about 30 pounds, which is greater than WP. That's the weight uh, component that's parallel to the, for or to the, to the surface. And so if WP is less than the maximum value of the friction force, the block stays put. It doesn't move. On the other hand, if mu is less than 0.578, so if mu is, say, 0.3, then the maximum F sub F would be about 13 pounds. And uh, since WP is 25 pounds, the block would start to move. Okay. So as long as mu, as long as the actual coefficient of friction is greater than 0.578, uh, friction will oppose this WP, causing the block to slide. If it's less, it won't. And so what I'd like to do now, this sort of finishes this part of the example, but what I'd like to do now is look at this for a generic value of um, theta. And it actually will tell us something that we can use to determine what the, um, uh, what the uh, coefficient of friction is. So um, let's see. If we clear off a spot to work with here. So instead of, um, instead of uh, just deciding that we have 50 pounds, Let's suppose we just have a weight which we call W. And then W sub n will be W cosine of theta. And that's the other thing that we need to do, which I wasn't clear on. Suppose that instead of a 30 pound or a 30 degree angle here, we have just an uh, uh, angle theta, which we haven't actually specified. So we have Wn as W cosine theta. WP is equal to W sine theta. Okay, the maximum frictional force is mu times n. So we can say that mu would be the maximal friction force over n. And if we are at static equilibrium at the point where if we make the angle any larger, the box will start to slide then F sub F will be equal to WP and W or N will be equal to WN. And so this ratio would then become W sine theta over W cosine theta. And the W's cancel sine over cosine is tangent. So we have tangent of theta. So what this basically says then is no matter what the weight is, the angle at which my box starts to slip is related, that, that angle theta is related to the friction coefficient mu 
through this relationship. So, for example, in the, the example we did with 30 degrees, if uh, theta is 30 degrees, tangent of theta is 0.577, which is uh, pretty close within the margin of rounding error that we had from you. Okay. What this also does is it gives us a way to measure the uh, uh, friction coefficient by measuring the theta at which an object starts to slide. And so I actually did that. Uh, whoops, where'd it go? Um, okay. I did, I swear I did. Um, well, here, I'll pause this and find it. Okay, I found it. What I did is basically took my daughter's math book, that's what we have here, I put a stapler on it, and also set up a protractor so I could measure the angle at which the stapler starts to slide. And then I would just raise uh, the angle of the book until the stapler starts to slide, and that gives me the coefficient of friction between uh, the stapler and the book. And uh, for the experiments I did, the angle at which the stapler begins to slide is about uh, 22.5 degrees, which says that the coefficient of friction is about to one significant digit 0.4. So again, um, you can the, the stapler actually has sort of a rubber base, which makes it or a plastic base, which makes it less likely to slide. I found that uh, smooth plastic uh, slid at a lower angle with a coefficient of a friction of about 0.2. So if you really want to know what the coefficient of friction between two surfaces are, if you can set up this sort of experiment, all you need to do is measure the angle at which an object starts to slide, and you can uh, know the coefficient of friction. So that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.